Brad Harmon. Hello, my good man. What's going on? Nothing much. I was I was thinking about taking tonight off, you know, washing my hair and shit. Unbelievable. You don't have any hair. Cut it out. Yeah, this is true. I was going to trim my beard. Trim your beard. Yeah, I've got this one white hair just just hanging out. I'm gonna I'm gonna go Ridiculous. take the next 45 minutes and go pluck it. Ridiculous. Uh, you were not excited about uh, reviewing Universal Soldier, nope. the, re- the Return, starring uh, Bill Goldberg. No, not in at his, all. In his I remember seeing it back video. in 1999, and I had forgot about it for good reason yeah probably yeah <laughs> i i wish i'd forgotten about this movie um who picked this shit uh well i'll tell you who picked it um one of the two guests that we have on the show tonight two guests two guests unbelievable um first the man who picked this freaking joke of a movie welcome back to the show we had him on first season flash nick mckenna what's going on brother how you doing guys it's great to be here Wow, <laughs> you sound excited. <laughs> I am so excited. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, you picked this movie, uh, so thanks. But no. okay, okay. I, now I I suggested this movie, and only because I, I okay. Originally, I was talking to you, and you guys had just done your review of Thunder in Paradise. Yeah, and and you had said that you were going to do your review of. Boo and the Bounty Hunter. And so, in keeping with the theme of terrible movies, I specifically said to you, I could take a screen cap if you want, I specifically said, you should do the Universal Soldier sequel with Goldberg. That was terrible. Yeah, but you sounded, like, really excited, like, really adamant to make us watch this. You were like, you know, it's terrible, but, you know, I got the impression that you love it, like, in a weird way. I, I hated this movie. Okay. Now, I... I, I I spe- like I specifically hate this movie because I loved the original so much. Sure. And then, you know, and then you know, seven years later they came out with a sequel, and I was so excited to see it. And it, I, I saw it in the theaters. Yeah. Wow, that's embarrassing. And it was it. garbage. Yeah. This was yeah, worse. It was than, so bad. This was worse than the time Crockett made us watch that movie about the wrestling dog. Uh, yeah. This is, yeah, <laughs> this is worse. This is worse. I, I didn't actually hate that movie. Uh, but anyway, uh, moving on. Guest two here to help us with this. Uh, Mr. Dave Adams. What's up, Dave? We've seen you uh, out at Limitless shows. We've become buddies over the years. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Uh, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Uh, I can't believe anybody's watched more than one John Claude Van Damme flick. Anyways, uh, that's not I my kind of movie. Love John Claude Van Damme. Not this a was Jason kind of a, guy. This was kind of a project for me, uh, but I I got through it. I got through it. Nice. I, I I looked up information about this. I'm I'm ready to go, man. Oh my goodness, I love this. I love that you told us that you watched it twice. I did. I did. Great. I couldn't believe that it would actually be as bad. As I thought it was initially, I'm like, no way. That that had to have been a mistake. Hey, hey watch this twice. Can I go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you're dismissed. Class dismissed. Uh, <laughs> no. oh, uh, God. <laughs> so uh, yeah, my partner did my homework. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, so we kind of got to know Flash last season on the show. We had we had an interview with Flash on. Uh, but Dave, this is your first time on the show. Why don't you tell listeners a little bit, uh, like what what's going on with you in wrestling? You like wrestling? You what? You've watched it for a long time. Uh, uh, I wouldn't even say a long time. I'm just a d bag who likes wrestling. That's there you go. That's be all end all. Uh, yeah. I, I, I go to some of the local shows. Um, but uh, and I and I keep up with WWE and NXT and that sort of thing. Nice. Um, but uh, you know, other than that, you know, I'm just a big bag that watches wrestling. <laughs> yeah, Harmon, what'd you say? You're a big New England sports honk in general, right? You know? Oh God, yeah. I'm actually watching the Bruins as we're uh, as we're recording this right nice. now. Nice. Feel to free to uh, you know let us know what's going on with the Bruins. It's two one Bruins right now. Nice. Uh, game three. I'm sorry, game four. Uh, against the Leafs, uh, they're up two games to one, and they're leading two to one. Yeah, nice. When was the last time Toronto was any good? Jeez. Uh, well, you know they've been really good this year. Really good this year. Um, but yeah, they haven't won a cup since 1967. Oof. Nice. Wow. So if we if we hear any like 
uh, loud, abrupt, you know, cheers out of you. It, I'm assuming that <laughs> it's the, I'm, I'm assuming it's the Bruins game and not because of your love for Bill Goldberg's <laughs> acting chops. <laughs> oh God, you never know. You never know. <laughs> and his really shitty, like, uh, like catchy lines, like uh, "Next stop," <laughs> <laughs> like whatever he says. Oh, like, yeah. Next Take time. a break, pretty boy. Take a break. Loves Van Damme's face <laughs> underwater. Right. It was so ridiculous. Yeah. Oh my god. Guard this while beating up guards. <laughs> sure. Oh my god. Oh god. Yeah. He yeah. Had there were some, some bad some ones. Great one-liners. Um. Uh, also, before we get in, Flash, I wanted to touch back uh, with you. Touch base, with Flash. What's going on with you uh, in this wacky world of wrestling? I, you're doing some. PWT shows you're doing uh yeah some, I'm some still doing the show. PWT shows I'm uh, still still working for uh, uh North Atlantic Wrestling Association I actually I, I Johnny I got to I got in touch with you because uh you know because on the podcast you know you were talking we were talking about my goals for the future and so on and so forth and I had said how I'd like to win a battle royal and I, I got the chance to win a battle royal just a few weeks ago Yes. Uh, in Kennebunkport. So that was kind of fun. Um, and then uh, I had a I had a really great uh, grudge match with Blade Bandit just uh, just last Friday in Springvale, Maine. Nice. Um, and Blade now Bandit I guess I guess kind of a, on you. That bastard. Yeah. That bastard. He's he's a he's, yes he he's he's not a good person. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, Molly had a good time watching you guys. Nice. Um. Flash, did you at any point use the line "Next stop, intensive care"? No, <laughs> but that, but I, I will next time for oh, sure. Please do specifically because. Please do, please do. <laughs> All right, boys. Uh, before we dive into this uh, awesome movie, uh, we're gonna do some quick plugs for the show. Um, Listeners at home, you guys can check us out on social media. That's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Main Event Pod. We are on Podbean, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn Radio. Uh, we've got a hotline. That number is 929-260-3099. Something really cool is going on with it right now. Harmon, why don't you tell the kiddos at home? What's this little contest we, we've uh, constructed? I don't know if you've heard, but the next Limitless show is down to only 150 tickets. Yeah. So... If you uh, are running a little short on cash or you just don't think you're going to make it in time, uh, call our hotline. We have two extra tickets. And if you cut the promo that we pick to win, you also win an X-Pac autograph from that Wrestle Club. That's right. And once again, that number, 929-260-3099. Leave us a message. With a baller promo, and you're gonna get that prize pack. Tell you what, so. if you call right now and don't even leave a baller promo, you'll probably win. Oh, <laughs> Aww. I can't Just wait for my of... Xbox autograph. I cannot wait. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You gotta call my man. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Also, we got Teespring store. Uh, go there, buy some, buy some shirts. That's about it. Hoodies, stickers, shirts. Go there, buy it. You're good. Uh, Tapestries, <laughs> towels. You know. Yeah, socks, all that, all that stuff. Uh, strongstylebrand.com slash main event pod. Go there if you'd like. Get some cool strong style merch. Um, use code main event pod at checkout. You're going to get 10% off. Uh, it's a great way to get some cool merch and also support this podcast because a little bit of that gets uh, kicked back our way. So that would be very nice and very appreciated. Um, I just remember that I did. Did you ever get a new fridge, Johnny? I did get a new fridge. Yeah, I did finally. Yeah. Johnny, I did new fridge. Yep. What's wrong with your old fridge? Yep. Yeah, the fridge, uh, the fridge shit the bed. Yep. Uh, just. Uh, oh, just she shit, shit the bed, did she? Oh, yeah. she, I mean, she was like seventeen years old, so I mean, you know, figure. <laughs> oh, she had a good run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she had a good run. She was getting yeah. to that age where she could start buying lottery tickets of porno, you know. <laughs> right. Yep. She was like, "We gotta shut this bitch down." <laughs> start yeah. buying smokes. Yeah, but no, thanks to uh, some some hat sales. Uh, yeah, I was able to get a fridge. So uh, again, we've got some hats available. You know, Harmon and I will be at the next show. We'll uh, we'll have them. I don't think I don't think we're gonna have a table because it's kind of uh, cramped in the old Portland Club. But uh, you know, we'll probably have them in the the trunk of our cars or something. So if you guys want a hat, just come talk to us and uh, slip us a little cash, and we'll give you a hat. 
So yeah, oh, yeah. It, it, every little bit helps. So we got so them in black. Dishwasher and white. next time. Yeah, yeah, I do. The dishwasher is just about as old. So we'll see. We'll see what major appliance breaks next. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they sell them hats. <laughs> I know. Oh goodness. Uh, I really want. I really wanted one of the Johnny need Johnny Fashion needs a fridge shirts. I know we still gotta make those, but <laughs> even though I don't need a fridge anymore, whatever whatever breaks next, it's uh it's gonna be shirts. So, uh, all right, you guys ready to dive into this epic flick? Can't wait! I can't wait! Can't I'm wait. so excited! All right, <laughs> all right, here we go! Here we go! Universal Soldier: The Return, uh, starring JCVD, uh, Michael Jai White, and Bill Goldberg, and I believe yeah. his I believe his debut yeah his big yeah his big screen debut yes film debut this was like the peak of goldberg too it was like 1999 wcw like this is uh goldberg was a big deal yeah Um, yeah the 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 mega death song that plays during the credits he used as entrance music for a little while no shit to promote the movie did you know that or did you just like imdb that you knew that no i i I remember it from when i was a kid and watching him do his entrance (laughs) oh wow nice Oh boy, um, the the very first note I have on this movie is that it's the like longest opening credits ever. It's just like uh, <laughs> they were so long. I know. I I I when I was watching it, I turned it to like one point two five times just to yeah. kind of to get through it. Yeah, it, and it's just like a computer typing out all the credits, like just and then going away and typing more. And I was like, whoa, yeah. what is this? When's this? Not even end? an interesting opening. No, like, yeah, not even. Yeah, not even. It was really just dumb. Yeah, zero action. But then it kicks right into the action. Well, actually, no, I think is it before the credits or right after it? They they show like a kind of a sneak peek of of uh Michael Jai White there with the Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they yeah, showed so just a like, quick sneak peek at his body, you know, just yeah, kind of chilling out. Like, at first I was like, I didn't realize Wesley Slips is in this. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. It, did it kind of looked like him from behind and Yeah, am I watching Blade, Demolition Man? Blade esque. <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah, there's all this cryogenic freezing going on. Yeah. <laughs> Demolition, Man? <laughs> Demolition Man? Oh, boy. Uh, so then it, like, after the credits, it really dives right into the action, uh, right into a, a jet ski uh, chase. So JCVD, yeah. JCVD and uh, uh, what's her name? Maggie? Maggie. Is her name? Yeah. Maggie's the character name, yeah. Maggie. She is, uh, they're riding a jet ski together. Um, they're getting away from... Uh, you know, it's pretty easy to figure out Universal Soldiers. They're in the fucking uniforms and everything. Yeah, this looked like a ride at Universal Soldiers. Universal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, JCVD hits this jump, which is impossible, by the way, guys. Like, there was, like, no, like, real, like, ramp for this jump. He just, like, no. yanks, yanks on it. Right out of the gate. Just a yeah. serene swamp, and then just, boom, there he is. And then yeah. the fucking 90s metal starts immediately. Yeah. Like, Head-banging metal. Yeah, like he's in the fucking X Games or something. He's just like, it hits this crazy jump on this jet ski. Uh, guys, there are fucking bullets everywhere in this scene. Yeah. And no one gets shot. <laughs> like, right. Like, it's just crazy. I think, like, one one bad guy gets shot, uh, and that's it. Well, they kind of they kind of touch on that later on. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, but still. The, yeah. But, like... Very- they, yeah, yeah, they mentioned how, like, with their new body armor and stuff like that, they're practically bulletproof and stuff like that. But, like, with the hundreds of thousands of rounds that must have been fired off over the course of this movie, nobody took a shot to the head. <laughs> right, no, that's not true. Not one. Nope, never, never. Uh, the very first line in this movie, uh, the very first line spoken, is, uh, he's good, he's stupid. That's the line. That's it. <laughs> I was like, "What a way to open!" Uh, it's in it's it's uh, in regards to one of the soldiers like water skiing, like behind the jet ski. Yeah, like they yeah, because so so they're on the jet ski. They're it's being chased on the jet ski a thousand times. <laughs> he does get shot yeah. a thousand times. Yeah, that doesn't affect him. He keeps driving the boat. Then he gets punched in the face one time. He falls overboard and grabs the rope. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and but no, but the thing is, is that they so so they're on the jet ski and then. They go from the jet ski to hijack the fan boat, and then they right. go from the fan boat to hijack the ski right. boat. <laughs> Which, his, his instructions to his female counterpart was jump, and the fan boat hits their jet ski and they land in the fan boat like perfectly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. 
just the, the <laughs> most like unorthodox stunts ever. Yeah. Um, Goldberg, we see Goldberg super early on. I, I didn't realize that he would have such a major role in this movie, being like a noob to the to the screen. But uh, he's like right here in the first scene, uh, being a creep right out of the gate. Yeah. Like super creepy Goldberg. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And his name is Romeo, by the way, in this movie. So, ugh. Yeah. Super creepy. He like rips Despite the fact that none. Yeah, he ri- yeah, he rips off her shirt. Like yeah. he's gonna like do something to her, and then he's all like, "We got all the time in the world," but like, of course, none of the other Unisols like show any kind of emotion or thought, or I think even speak yeah. for the entire movie. Like none of them do anything. Okay, yeah. Except for, for, Goldberg, except for him. Maniacal smirks. Right. I was gonna ask yeah. that. I was gonna ask that because that makes sense. Like no, like nobody else shows emotions for the movie, and I remember in the first Universal Soldier. None of them, they were very, like, just drone-like. Like, even, like, Van Damme and Dolph. Which, oh, that's too bad. There's no Dolph. Yeah, exactly. Um, but they, there's, oh, like, they no did make they, they did make another one later. Yeah. Yeah, they made, in 2012, they made Universal Soldier Day of Reckoning, and they brought Dolph back for that. Oh, okay. Even though, even, though in the, even though in the first movie, spoiler alert, he got thrown into a wood chipper. Oh. Oh, that's no big deal. Yeah, you can come back from that. Back from yeah. that. Not not for yeah. Dolph Lundgren. No, yeah, Dolph Lundgren, he'll, he'll figure it out. The Punisher, for God's sake. Um, so, uh, yeah, the original that's, Punisher. Yeah, that's that's right. right. There's that's a piece of movie trivia Punisher. for you. Yeah. Uh, and then so we soon realized that this whole thing was just an exercise. Uh, that yeah. It was just a, an exercise for the whole Universal Soldier program thing. I think you're um, missing a very important part here. Oh, what is it? Bring Van Damme like shoots Goldberg with a grenade. He goes oh, flying yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. And instead of helping Maggie get uncuffed from the tree, he just stares at her boobs. <laughs> yeah, that was super weird too. He just stares. Like, yeah. Just... yeah, and yeah, she kind of has a lot to, like, of boob bring him staring in this movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like unnecessarily. Uh, uh yeah, yeah, totally. Of 1999 attitude era. Yeah. I, I feel like Jean-Claude Van Damme was like well, there must be boobs in this scene. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we gotta just put those boobs in here every like so often. So right. you know, we gotta keep the boobs keep the roundhouse boobs. kick movie done. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how JCPD <laughs> writes his films. <laughs> oh boy. Um. So let's see. They go. They so, go back to like the yeah. Facility. So they yeah, and they find out that their funding's being cut yeah. and that the the program's being ended. Ooh. And we gotta learn. And we so, gotta learn a few things here, though. We learn that that. JCBD, he has a daughter. Uh, maybe I don't really, really remember anything from the first one. I don't know if any of this was like in the first one, but he has a daughter. Her name's Hillary. And then, yep, no, no, the woman from the first movie apparently he married her and they were able to bring her back to take wedding photos for him to stare at longingly, but not able to bring her back to actually be in the movie. Oh my god, what a mess! <laughs> Those what pictures mess. were from '92. Come on. Uh... <laughs> They didn't have a wedding scene in 92. They shot it in 92, okay? Keep it kayfabe. <laughs> keep it kayfabe. Keep it okay. Come on, Flash. Keep it um, kayfabe. So Hillary is, like, being, like, taught by, uh, like, the AI that kind of runs this whole place. Uh, its name Seth. is Seth. Um, Seth. Seth. Yes, who has, who has Michael Jai White's voice for no reason. Yeah, and you know what's so funny is, like, I, I was wondering if Michael Jai White would, like, be in this movie or if they're just going to use his voice because I was like, oh, man, like, what a waste. Like, that guy's an amazing martial artist if he's just the voice. But then I was like, oh, this is the movie that would do that. If, they, if there was yeah. any movie that would do it, it would be this movie. <laughs> yes. They would hire just, like, the most badass martial artist and be like, we're just going to use your voice. Oh, you don't you don't want me to like kick and punch or anything? No, 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 no. We just we just like your voice. We just want you to be the voice of this. this it is. System. I mean, it is. It is a very. It's a very you know soothing baritone. Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, but it, it is. It it is. It is a. It is. It is a, a. You know, quite the voice. Yeah. It's just but it, certainly it not all that Michael Dry White brings to the table. Mm-mm, mm-mm. So yeah, Flash, like you said, their project is getting shut down. <laughs> Um, and Seth kind of like hears this, you know, he's, he's all around. He's, a, you know, the big brother type, you know, thing. And he's like, kind of, he hears, he hears that the project's getting shut down. So he's got to do kind of something. Yeah. He goes all it. Skynet. Yeah. He goes Skynet. Yeah. He goes, exactly. That's the perfect way. He goes all Skynet 
and activates the Unisol. Yeah, and it's, it's a big giant Terminator with dead people instead of robots. Yeah, essentially. But, yeah. I even me, I I have a note later on too, like at the very end of the of the like the last fight scene that is very Terminator two. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but uh, so so yeah, so Seth kind of uh, he he sends like the alert to uh, to Romeo. Romeo gets the call, and it's just there is work to be done. And so yeah, Goldberg like you know he shows a little smile and he's like, hey, uh, hey, yeah. Hey, All right. hey, yeah. Which is, so, yeah, which is so funny because it goes back to what you guys were saying, where it's like, these guys shouldn't be showing any emotion. They're just essentially yeah. like, you know. Shells. Shells. Yeah, and like, like everybody everybody ignores the fact that Goldberg is like the only one who does or says, I, I'm pretty sure he's the only Unisol who speaks throughout the entire movie. I could be wrong. But I'm pretty right. sure that none of the other Unisols have any lines. And yeah. so it's like, but it's like nobody nobody cares that this one guy is like you know the guy who's gonna i don't know you know i bang a girl but he's got tied to a tree and rip her clothes off right yeah he licks his even lips though they're, all, like, even creepy. though yeah even though they're supposed to be like you know they're supposed to be like soulless automatons yeah uh one one part that i found really <laughs> disturbing in this is uh like is right around here is where we find out that jcvd's wife is dead he's like hugging the picture of her uh like you're like you mentioned flash and then like his daughter uh starts asking some questions um and then (laughs) why did mommy die yeah why did mommy die (laughs) like and and van damme we just have to believe that god had a reason right he says something like that like this is god's plan or whatever and i was like dude you work in a place that is like run by ai and you are (laughs) You're reviving the dead all yes, the time yeah. to come back. I was like, you cannot tell me that. I, oh, my God, guys, I got to tell you, I didn't even make that connection until you said that just now. Oh, it's, just, <laughs> right. it's insane. That's a good like, question, honey. I don't know why mommy had to die. Like, nobody else in this movie dies, really. <laughs> right, yeah, right. not even not, not even that. Maggie later on. Yes. Spoiler alert. Uh, spoiler alert. Yeah. Um. So then. Yeah, because. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, guys. No, go, go for it. What were you going to say? I was going to say that, so I had mentioned to you before we started recording that I was listening to your other episode of your podcast, and so I had started your guys' review of Boone the Bounty Hunter, but then realized I had to stop listening to it because I wanted to watch the movie. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, you should probably watch watch those movies before you, uh, yeah. you listen to the podcast. A lot of spoilers. Um, so then, moving on, the, Hillary says that Seth is sick. And so he basically is uh, becoming, I guess, not really self-aware, but but like you guys said, going Skynet, he's kind of like, he's up to some shady shit. Um, and, and basically the place goes on lockdown. The whole facility goes on lockdown. Meanwhile, there's like a reporter who is coming in that day to do some bullshit story on something. And so she just happens to be there. She's like the female love interest of... Of course, she's Jason. hot as fuck. She of just course. happens to be. Of course. they They all are. You know, it's like, come on. Well, she's, I mean, she's a woman under 40 in a movie. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of goes without saying that. Yeah. Um, but my point, my point is, is that women in movies under 40, typically they kind of, I think there might be like some kind of law in Hollywood that says they have to be, right. They have to be attractive in some way, shape or form. Sure. Makes sense. <laughs> uh, so, the, so the people start realizing that like, um seth is instructing all the unisols to kind of like go haywire and take control of them and just basically fuck shit up so they're gonna try and shut off seth but they they can't seth is like he's got a, uh, his his tracks covered here they try to like shut the breakers off and like he just sends yeah. like this just this electric surge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah he just blows guys like off the wall uh it's just oh, that's up that. zap <laughs> Uh, yeah, like he he detects threats uh, at any chance, you know, at any at any turn. So so he can't get out of there. Um, and so maybe maybe somebody can explain it a little better than I can. But what's the deal with like they've? Is it like eight hours that they have to wait, or else he'll he'll kind of self shut down? Yeah, there's there's like a code that has. To, so 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 they have they have like an emergency code, you know, and I I, I assume it has something to do with the lockdown, but like. They have an emergency code 
that if it's not plugged in, then Seth's whole memory gets wiped. Right, right, right. Okay. And so only the doctor that has been electrocuted and killed and Jean-Claude Van Damme. Of course. Uh, his character's name is Luke Devereaux, by the way. And so they are the only ones who have the code. And so I, I, I thought that that was a really interesting, I, I actually, I thought that was one cool thing that was about the movie because it was like an explanation as to why none of the Unisols were just shooting JCVD dead. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it made sense that they had to like, they weren't like going out into public, like just causing a ruckus. You know what I mean? Like they weren't just yeah. like, going out and like killing right. random people. They, 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 they kind of like stayed at the facility and did whatever the hell they did. But yeah, they, uh, they kind of had to man, man the fort while he got his, uh, his brain miniaturized. Yes. Yes. To, yes. To put into the yeah. body. So they kind of had to stick around for that. Yeah. So like chaos I like that is... surgery machine too, where it just cuts a square out of the guy's head and just shoves <laughs> yeah. something in the brain. And then and then it just like no. just like shoves a little cube into the brain. It's like it's it's meant to look all like intricate yeah. and very very <gasps> careful. And it's like this, just like truck. Right. Like, it's, like, they, yeah, they, I just they put like an audible. Place. Right here. They put like a sound effect in there of like this this squishing sound effect. <laughs> Sticking your finger in a jello cup. <laughs> yeah, it was really, really bad. Yeah, and like the the apparatus like wasn't like tight at all. Like things just kind of like moving around. I'm like, what is that? There's no, yes. there's no precision on that. What is happening? Uh, goodness. This wobbly looking thing that they... Just so you know, the red laser cuts. The yeah. red laser cuts. The yeah, and then... Oh, yeah, and then... And so, so yeah, they, read, they, they did a red laser cut and then they just... They literally, you could tell it was just them <laughs> do, playing the same clip backwards <laughs> to like seal it up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, to like seal it up. Yeah. Uh, nope. So chaos is kind of ensuing here. There's a lot of like little fight scenes going on. Romeo seems to be like the uh, the head honcho that Seth is kind of calling on to like go get uh, JCVD. Uh, there's a fight scene where Maggie rides Romeo down the stairs in the hilarious. Yeah, thing. I was gonna mention that one. <laughs> she so they get in a fight and then she knocks him down and then and then so the little girl takes a tumble down the stairs and so when she takes her tumble she's right there next to the stairs but when Maggie gets to her she's like twenty feet down the hall <laughs> lying on the floor. Yeah, yeah. But but yeah so but no but maggie rides goldberg down the stairs like a friggin toboggan <laughs> and his head goes through the cement wall yeah um, oh my god it was hilarious yeah so so hillary is like she's like down and out like something like right she, she hits her head or something yeah. is that what's happened to yeah, she hit her head and yeah she's out so uh <laughs> i don't know it was just a weird scene um <laughs> So then Seth, we, we it's a cut, weird movie. It is a weird movie. Yeah. So we cut to like this guy who's kind of like this hacker, like this underground guy. He's just doing all kinds of weird shit. He's eating fucking cereal and soda. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it, we're it, poking it. It, it, was, it was just like the most ridiculous scene. Like it, uh, this guy's <laughs> name is, this guy's name is squid. Uh, and yep. his hacker name, you know, yeah, <laughs> right. And so it, it's, it sounds like the backstory on this guy is that he used to work there. He used to work at the facility, and they yeah. fired him. Yeah. Um, so he yeah, he helped his... he helped create Seth, and oh, so okay. we discover that like he and Seth he and Seth have been like doing this like online gaming thing where they play I don't know what was popular in '99 Quake or something like that. Doom. <laughs> so they've been playing online every Thursday night. Right. And so Seth contacts him, and he's like, "It's not even Thursday. <laughs> it's not right. time to play." Duke Nukem yet? <laughs> Duke Nukem, yeah. Duke, Duke Nukem, Duke Nukem, starring John Cena. Yes, coming to a theater near you. Oh boy! I love how he's eating Frankenberry. Oh, with oh wooden speaking spoon. of which, yes. speaking of which, I, 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 I could not believe I was so really, upset. Really, really gets just the Yeah, I was listening to the. I'm sorry, guys. I, oh, I hate to get off topic, but I was, I was listening to the Nerdist podcast, which is my other favorite podcast after the main event podcast. Really? Because you're um, your first favorite podcast. But that's okay. Shut up. I'm trying like, to keep plug another I'm trying to keep the case yeah. in. <laughs> anyway, the point is I was listening to John Cena on there and he was talking and doing his little spiel and I was like, Oh my god, I friggin' love this guy. He's so cool. And then I found out that he and Nikki Bella split and I was all upset. Well <laughs> Yeah. Are you gonna but try no. and date him? Anyway. Are you gonna ask him no. <laughs> Uh, I know. Jerk. That was, that was I, a bummer. 
No wonder I like Harmon better than you. It's true. You always say that too. Oh goodness. Um. So what's All right, going sorry. on next? Get, no, getting what's back on topic. Next? Aaron. Aaron is the reporter's name. She is there. <laughs> Yeah. She she does not have the kind of reaction that I thought she would. Like all this shit's going down, and she's just like this reporter, but she's like handling it then all. She's all like, I'm getting my story. Yeah, yeah. She's still determined to get the story. I'm like, there are dead bodies everywhere. Like, what is wrong with you? Get the fuck out of there. Uh, um. Yeah, it's not like these are refugees in fucking Afghanistan. These are super sh- soldiers shooting fucking rockets at you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then there's a weird scene where, like, four of these uh, soldiers come out, and then they just get blown away by, like, the actual, like, U.S. military. They're out there. Uh, and yeah. They, yeah, they get they get shot down, and then they send out, like, two two kids. They look like you know, squeaky clean kids. You're like, he, you know, he's like, he just said, like, the colonel or whatever says, like, two names, like, Smith and Johnson, get out there and check it out. And they get, they get like, <laughs> ten feet from him. And, like, okay, the, boss. Yeah, Here okay. And uh, the four I'm soldiers. I'm sure they're like, dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the uh, four soldiers go all Undertaker and just sit up and blow yeah. them away. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then they, then they just go crazy. They just start, like, blowing everything up. Uh, and then some yep. shitty song comes on or whatever and it's just it was a whole weird weird like scene of it, it was like a music video i was like what is this what is happening why is the music getting louder this is awkward <laughs> so, yeah and then they, they, I, they blew up and they blew up the reporter i love that bit yeah yeah they i, I felt like they were like oh that was uh, one of the few women in the whole movie where uh, her tits weren't ogled it's true yeah that reporter right there it was only because she was blown up really quickly yeah yeah, what is she doing? Like five she... more minutes though, Oglin would have happened. Yeah, Romeo, <laughs> exactly. Rome, yeah. Romeo would have come over and just uh, taken care of business. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so uh, JCVD and Aaron, they're like still, they're like together. They're trying to elude Goldberg here. Uh, they get to the outside, uh, and then what's going on here? They they escape, they escape uh, the in chase Goldberg. And then I think at this point, Seth implants that miniaturized like brain into the body of Michael Jai White, um, which has been bio. That sounds about right. Yeah. Oh, but but something something I think that Warren's mentioning is as they escape the facility, like you said, John, they escape by jumping into the back of this truck filled of shredded, you know, sensitive documents or whatever. Oh, yes, yes. And so then. Goldberg tries to follow. JCVD pulls the truck forward. Goldberg misses and just says shit as he hits the pavement. <laughs> and then, and then, go ahead. That yeah, scene, then, like, uh, right yeah. The and so then, then JCVD backs up over him. I can have it. Yes. Oh. Unbelievable. And then, and then, yeah. And the and the girl's like, you just slammed him, and he's like, no, that's only gonna slow him down. And then he's all like, I hate that guy. And you can see his hand. Reaching up to like let the air out of the tire. Yeah, it's a very like Tom and Jerry esque scene, or like <laughs> Wiley yeah. Coyote right there. Yeah, yeah, Wiley Coyote kind of a thing. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god! Falling off the cliff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Goldberg is Wiley Coyote in this movie. Uh, missing oh, spears. Oh. Left and right. If only he had like whistled and splat, you know. Yeah. Woo. Right, like he's just that standing awesome. in the air for a minute, and he like pauses to take a look down, like. Look up. At the <laughs> yep. Um, so we're introduced. Typical Monday. <laughs> yeah. So we're introduced to uh, to Michael Jai White. He is Seth uh, in the flesh. Uh, he immediately is the- becomes the best actor in this film, like by far. Yeah. Like immediately, I was like, "Oh, this movie just like took an upswing in the acting chops." All right. Uh, and he really is good. Like I, he's he's a pretty phenomenal actor, actually. I don't know. Yeah, be- before before he came came on, the only two decent actors in the movie were the guy who played the doctor that got right. electrocuted. Yep. And then and then the guy who played the general. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who I can't remember who that is, but I've seen him in like a ton of stuff. He's always like. And he plays know, the stuff. same guy in every movie. Yeah. Mm. The guy the super. Oh my god, what is going on over there? He played the chief in Super Troopers. Oh yeah, there you go. Not, right. yep. Not the captain, but the chief. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um so then so, so they kind of regroup. JCVD uh heads back in to the facility with a bunch of army rangers that have been sent there. 
Uh, yeah. They give to try and just <laughs> they give JCVD like zero armor. <laughs> like he just goes back in yeah. there with that shitty like Twill Henley that he's wearing throughout this movie. <laughs> They're just like, oh, do you need like a we? You know, we've got the fucking military here. Do you need like a you know a little body armor, a little suit or anything? He's like, nah, I'm good. I'm just gonna head back in there, I guess. Um, I used to be. One yeah, of just in my street clothes, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so they go in there, and I guess like their their whole mission is to like attach explosion uh, explosives to like the big chemical weapon tank, and they're just gonna blow the fuck out of this place. Uh, well, no, no, they were going in to destroy the generator to kill the power. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. They're trying to okay. they're trying to kill yeah. Seth. There's just yeah, they're just trying to shut down Seth. Yeah. Um, but they get interrupted, of course by soldiers and more yeah. shitty metal music in the background. So again, we get we get like a five minute long uh, scene just, of terrible of music just automatic gu- automatic gunfire. Yeah, with nobody getting hit. Um, so again, just more more fight scenes, more uh, more explosions, more explosions for no more reason. More people on fire. <laughs> there, there's one funny scene. Everybody's on fire in that. Everybody's on fire. Yeah. Uh, there's one scene here where like one of, uh, Van Damme's guys is like, you know, trying to assemble the explosives. And then like one of the soldier guys, uh, just <laughs> like very like automatically, he just kind of like is marching and then he just kind of like turns his head and sees him and then he just turns like his weapon and shoots yeah. him like point blank and then just goes about his business. Like I thought oh, it was like, really what are you doing here? Huh. Ah. Boom. Done. <laughs> yeah. And then he just leaves. I was like, Oh, well, that was weird. An awkward scene. Uh, <laughs> Didn't didn't check out the explosives at all. Just nope. dead. Move on. Yeah. Uh, so JCVD and Aaron they escape once again, uh, and they have to go. They have to go to a place that has internet. <laughs> so yeah, what better? And place? so I yeah yeah <laughs> like they say they say you can tell how dated the movie is because he says we need to get somewhere I can get on the internet and the girl says well how are you going to get on the internet when all the phone lines are down. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, that is a very 1999 thing to say. <laughs> uh, so they go to a strip club because yeah, uh, Van Damme's like, "Oh, I know that place is online," and she's like, "How do you know?" And he has to be all coy about it, like, "Uh, uh I saw it on 60 Minutes." It's on yeah. 60 Minutes, right? <laughs> what a dick! I saw it on 60 Minutes. Like, we're adults here. Come on, like, why is he being all weird? Oh goodness. Yeah. I think 17-year-old me wrote that scene. <laughs> <You're> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, um, and then this is obviously Harmon's favorite part of the movie. They, they go to a, a strip club and just boobs galore. Boobies! <laughs> boobies! <laughs> um, he, uh, so Van Damme, like, goes goes upstairs and he just, like, headbutts his way into the, uh, into this one room that has yeah internet. And he can and just there's some phone, yeah. There's some phone sex operators in there, and uh, that was a man. Stuff. That was a man. That was clearly like RuPaul or somebody. I right. don't know who that was, but it was not. Well, like... yeah, it was a RuPaul s character. Yeah, they were doing like lap dances in there, and also phone sex. Which yeah, was, yeah it was, it was a strange room. room. Yeah, it was a strange room. Computers and phone sex and lap dances. Yeah. Why was that one stripper in there? Like, what was her purpose? Yeah, no. the, what, yeah, she, yeah she, she was, was there. The pole and there was nobody in there watching her. Just yeah, just, like, 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 we warm up. Yeah, there wasn't anyone in there. <laughs> you got to stretch, man. You, get, you can't go out there cold. You <laughs> she's, yeah. she's stripping for the phone sex operators to really get them in the mood. Yeah, go out there and pull <laughs> Yeah, just to keep them. Uh, so, Van Dam somehow, like, hacks his way into finding out that squid is uh, kind of in cahoots with um, with Seth. So yep. they pay, they pay... one thing that JCVD screams is computer savvy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. The guy's a, he's a triple threat, man. <laughs> he's got that in there. Oh, goodness. So they go. They pay Squid a visit, and uh, Seth is there waiting for him. Seth, man. Yep. Just brutal. Seth is there waiting for him, and then he just snaps Squid's neck. After but, after Squid calls him his god, yeah. I'm not going to yeah. betray my god. Snap. Yeah, dead. but we kind of learned. God smited bit. him. Yes, he did. Uh, we kind of learn a little bit about Seth 
though. Like we learned that he he's like made up of like all this like he's basically a super yeah soldier. like he's got like he's got like uh nanotech enhanced muscle fibers and stuff and he's yeah. like five times stronger and faster than any other person yeah some somehow van damme is able to like hang with him though but so anyway he's like braun Strowman, but he's like... essentially braun Strowman. uh yeah um <laughs> so yeah seth like you said he he shows up he snaps squid's neck with like his fingers um and basically, Seth threatens Van Dam. Says like he'll uh, he'll basically take Hillary, uh, his daughter, from him if he doesn't give him the the code. Yeah, he says so. like I'll take yep. something more important away from you. And Van Dam looks at the reporter like you could have this bitch. And yeah. he's like, no, <laughs> uh, your daughter. Yeah. yeah, like I like that Van Dam didn't immediately think of that. Like, come on, man, we all we all know what's happening. What a, oh, Thinking about this first date piece of ass he's got with him, you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, and then, oh, you're not gonna, oh, you're not gonna take my daughter, who's, you know, does math homework and stuff with you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Oh, shit, I forgot you might remember her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah you only. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You only taught her her math homework and shit, and and babysat her for me while I was doing my live fire exercises. <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness! Uh, and so, like Seth, just like kind of makes that threat, and then like casually leaves. <laughs> I thought that was strange. Yeah, just like because, I mean, does he? Black, just yeah, move it on. Yeah, does he? But my my question is though, like, does he just know that like JCVD will like never give up the code, so he can't like it doesn't matter how much he hurts him or tortures him, like he will never give up the code. But so that's I think that maybe to, like, it was that. I don't know if maybe, like, the only explanation I can think of is that he knew the room was about to explode. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe, yeah. I don't know. But then, of course, he needs JCBD for the code, so if he knew the room was going to explode, you figure he would have tried to get him out of there. Yeah, I don't know. The whole thing. Loop yeah. Well, I thought he knew that the room wasn't going to explode because he disarmed all the bombs because when they tried to blow him up, it's like nothing no, happened. No, this, is, this is in Squid's room. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm lost. I yeah, I don't know. I only watched it twice. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But even, I don't know how many times you watched it, Flash. Sounds like you know a lot. Yeah, well, Flash went to the movie theater to see this, so. Yeah. You know, he um, yeah, and, th- and, uh, and it was super awkward thanks to that stripper scene because I went with my mother and my sister. No, that's always awkward. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah so that was, that was fun. <laughs> um, in the meantime, Seth has sent Goldberg to... Uh, someone's house to like listen to a, an answering that's, machine. That's 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 JCVD's house. Yeah. So he hears like the answering machine knows like where like what hospital Hillary is in, right? So then Seth can go there. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Exactly. It's all coming together, guys. This is a just a freaking tight story. No loopholes here. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's this like I, up next. There's like this random Goldberg destroys everyone scene. Where he's beating everybody up at the hospital, like, and he's using like crazy, shitty one-liners, like we talked about earlier, like the one that I used earlier, where he's like, "Next stop, intensive care," as he like <laughs> beats up like some some security guard. Um, and there was like numerous others. I feel like he rattled off like ten, and I could only write down two. Oh, it gets uh, really good when he's starting to beat up the uh, the the hospital security guard at the end. There, like, yeah, another, another WWE guy. Um, the hell was it? Sylvester Turkey. Oh, was he in this movie? Yeah, oh, shit. Wow. yeah, he got a backbreaker from. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's like, secure this. Yeah. He's like, what? <laughs> what is that? Yeah, God, this. Yeah, you guys aren't even trying. Like, this is horrible, right? Yeah, it was so bad. Yeah. Oh my god! What is to that put noise? the spear on. Yeah, yeah. He goes for a spear, I think, right? And Van Dam jumps out of the way, or like jumps yeah, he, up. Yeah, well, he, he, he hit the spear. On one he guy. hit the spear on the one guy. He hit the yeah. spear on the one guy, and then he went for the spear again on Van Dam. Yeah, and and Van Dam did the hop over, and he went into the ring post. <laughs> I mean, elevator. <laughs> yeah, the elevator. <laughs> the ring post. Yeah, and then he says the line "Saved by the Bell." Yeah. It's yeah, exactly. The when the now when the when the elevator door shuts on him. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. One of the many cheesy one-liners that oh just 
That was that was all he had oh, in God. this movie. Just nothing but one liners, which is yeah. probably for the best. Probably, yeah. Uh, God. So what's going on now? Where the fuck? Where the? Where is this movie going? Um. The, JCVD goes back to the facility right after getting. Yeah, because 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 Seth Seth brings Hillary back to the back to the right. facility where they have they have the medical regeneration thing that you know is that apparently you know they can't just share with the rest of the world. <laughs> right. So so basically they're gonna like. Is so his... Seth is all like I can. Seth is like because because she's got swelling in her brain, and they right. couldn't operate without parental consent. And so, uh, so she's got the swelling in her brain. She's going to die if something doesn't happen soon. And then, so Seth is all like, I could heal her. Just give me the code. And then Van Damme's not going to do it, but he tries to, he tries to set up the healing thing. And Seth is trying to take him out and he like shoots Seth in the chest. Cause that's like the, Oh, but we totally walked over the fact that Maggie's back. Oh yeah. Oh, Maggie, right. Maggie is now like this universal soldier thing. Who yeah, because apparently, apparently. All right, yeah, I was just about to say yeah, that. Well, yeah. Yep, she's got speaking parts and a personality and feelings and shit. And she's I, all like, she's all like, I'm one of them now. No, I don't think so. Not quite. And he's yeah. all like, I'm here to stop Seth. And she's all like, I can't let you do that. And then grenade to the chest. That's like the that's like the go to move. But I feel like that scene was so short for like such a for such like a twist. Yeah, it was. I was yeah, like, it was really dumb. I was like, oh no, Maggie's Maggie's a, a bad guy now. Oh, but now Maggie's dead. Okay, <laughs> I was like, all right, well, there that that happened. All right. But then Maggie comes back again. Yes, but Maggie. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah, because if there's one thing this movie has taught us, it's that grenades to the chest do not work on Universal Soldier. No. no, and I didn't get that either about like how she came back, but was good all of a sudden i don't know like, right anyway, we'll get to that in a few minutes but yeah anyway. it was uh, getting ahead of ourselves yeah um yeah okay so it's the big showdown so 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 it's a big showdown and van Dam and seth are fighting and and van Dam cannot hold his own with seth because seth is so much tougher than him but if you think about it and he's so, kind of holding his own i mean the way that that squid was describing Seth about how him being like the super soldier and all this stuff. It's like Van Dam would be, like be absolutely no match. It seems like Seth would be able to absolutely well, I, destroy I, Van Dam in a matter of seconds, but he, you know, but he doesn't. Well, like, I felt like, like it was, like back. it was a lot more of like a, it was a lot more of like a, a cat and mouse kind of thing where like, it was just, it was just Seth, you know, pursuing him the whole time. Right. He never really like, like he didn't like get any like shots off on him or anything like that or like have him up against up against the ropes. Yeah. He was just kind of like if he was doing more of an evasion thing, trying to get the the like healing machine to work on Hillary. Yeah, but then d does the code just get like cracked? Because at, at one point, like yeah, because because Seth has been Seth has been learning and expanding his blah -de blah -de blah, and so there's this concern that he might be able to crack the code, and then he does just before the showdown. He's like, I guess I don't need you anymore. He's like an oven timer. It's like, ding! Oh, I guess I don't need you anymore. Yeah, and Seth says, I don't need you alive anymore. Right, yeah. And then, and then, like, the showdown. And then he's like, don't worry, I'll take care of Hillary. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is weird. Yeah, and then they have the showdown. He doesn't have any emotion, yet he's still going to care for Van Damme's daughter. He's like, she'll understand. Yeah, exactly. And he's not supposed to have any emotion, but it didn't stop him from, like, even though he can communicate with all these unisols, like, essentially telepathically. He gives them all a big pep talk about how they're going to bring order to the chaos. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. This movie he's is all like, all he's all like the place. spread out. Yeah, spread out and bring us resources so we can so we can expand our numbers geometrically, I think is the word to use. Oh, goodness. And then it was uh, yeah, and it was just this this ridiculousness. So yeah, like I get that Seth has kind of like developed this personality, but he doesn't need to talk to the unisols. He just controls them right. with like this hive mind. But it doesn't stop him from giving this friggin' pep talk uh, of movie friggin' dialogue. Um, it was so bad. Yeah. So so this is the part, like the very end where they they defeat Seth is where this was like the Terminator two part where, where like uh, I, I believe it's Van Damme. He's got like the, the big gun yeah. and he's like 
he's like shooting Seth. And every time he shoots him, he gets like knocked back a little bit farther, a little bit farther. And it just reminded me of like the ending of T2 where like they're shooting Oh yeah, him, totally. Where they're so, like shooting he's shooting him and like, and like, and Seth is like, you've tried that already. It doesn't work. And he's like, you're right. So he shoots the thing and freezes him because they're in that cold chamber. Right. It was like they said, hey, you know what were what was like two really good action movies? Terminator 2 and Demolition Man. Let's combine the two and make this movie. And like we'll just take different aspects from it. Cause like And it'll be twice as good. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Because the freezing and shattering part was the exact same uh ending. Yeah. And it was Man. it was like the worst piece of CGI ever put on film. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. Uh, so that happens. Uh, Seth is frozen. JCB does, JCVD does the patented Van Damme kick, knocks his head off, shatters him. Uh, and, uh, I thought it was a pretty cool fatality, <laughs> you know, if we're going to go that yeah. route. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he, sh- he shattered, he shattered into a million poorly computer animated pieces. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we learned that like the military is going to like blow up the place. Right? They're just going to blow up, like, the whole place? Yeah, well, yeah, because Aaron's there, like, arguing, like, you can't blow up the place. He's in there. And he's all like, I don't have a choice. Right. He's like, we don't have a choice. There's the world to think of, blah, 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 blah. And then eventually she, he he makes it out. And then, oh, and and so they go to blow up the place, and she's all like, Seth Seth must have killed the charges because he's too smart. Ha, ha, ha. (laughs) Like, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, this computer that's trying to kill all of you is so smart. Ha ha ha. And right. so and and then she was kind of laughing. So Seth, so Seth is done and then in comes Goldberg again. Yeah, Romeo, he's the last obstacle. Oh my goodness. Now, yeah, I'm sure I don't get that. I don't get that at all because earlier in the movie they say if they just kill Seth's brain, then uh, all the other uh, all the unisols just stop. Yeah, they'll. Yeah, he said they, they that's did what they that said earlier. earlier in the they movie. They did say that, and yeah. then all of a sudden, I, I, I had forgotten. First, he's the first one to be dead, and all the unisols are still working. How does that work? I don't know. Real, real See, that's why you're gonna watch these things twice, boys. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, that's why you're gonna watch these things twice. That's yeah. right. I just want to make sure I get okay. credit for watching twice. That's really all it is. <laughs> just keep bringing yeah. it up. Well, yeah. Good, cre- good, good, good for you. Yeah. All right. Maybe they stayed alive because the code was entered in. Maybe they didn't need. Oh, we can we can assume that. Did you guys we notice? Just go that ahead and assume that was the, uh, was the number on the Starship Enterprise. What? No. You're full of shit, really. NCC one seven zero one. Yeah, yeah, that was the code. That's right. I'm I'm that big of a nerd. Unbelievable. That yeah. was the code. Nerd alert! Nerd alert! Yeah. Oh boy. I'm sorry. Wow, that's pretty amazing wow. that it took that so long to figure that out. Fun fact. Fun fact. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Romeo last up school. They're they're fighting. They have. They say the military guys say that there's that they have two minutes to like get out. And my first thought was like, ah, uh, another two minute Goldberg match. <laughs> that was my first thought. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, here's nothing new. Um, so but yeah, but no. So they can't set off the charges. So right. G- so Van Dam has this fight with Goldberg, and then. In comes Maggie again. Yeah, which again, this is what I was referring Goldberg. to. Goldberg. Yeah, she, 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 uh, yeah, Goldberg's got Van Damme like above his head, right? Is this, the, right? Yeah, and like, in like a, in like a press. Yeah. And then and he, Maggie. And then comes Ma- in comes Maggie, and he's all like, Maggie, take him out. And then she shoots Goldberg instead, and she's all like, it's too late for me. Yeah, what and was then, that about? Like, what was that? It was that? too late for her. But, like, why, what, how is she, like, just all of a sudden a, a good guy? Was it, like, her program because Seth was dead? Like, was her program, I don't know, man. I don't get that. Like, yeah, yeah, she, you like, just kind of have to make these assumptions. Like, why like you just have to kind of figure it out. A real, a real person like JCVD. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which they, which they never make any reference to. But just say, unless you want to be a universal soldier again. They never make reference as to how he doesn't need to be cooled anymore or he doesn't. <laughs> Right. You know, they don't make any reference to it at all. Yeah. Yeah, there's just like one As to part what kind where... of process he had to undergo to have it like to have his universal soldier ness, you know, right. extracted. Yeah, yeah there's just they like only this made one, part. one reference to the cooling down like once. Like they they're in there and they're supposed to be in there for like Yeah, in the beginning hours. of the movie. 
and they're in there for like maybe an hour before they pulls them back out and nobody overheats. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Seth is just like there's work to be done and they all just get to work. <laughs> yep. Unbelievable. Um so yeah, so then like then none of the explosives work, like you guys said. Uh Hillary and JCVD <laughs> escape. Um and Hillary does as well. And they're just like you know they're getting chased by all the all the all the unisols and like and then jcvd has to like shoot one of the explosives to set off like this chain reaction and blow it yeah and then yeah so the unisols are like coming out they're like coming anyway even though seth is gone yeah they're 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 coming for some reason and right? yeah for some for some completely and totally unknown reason yeah they still they they mean business and they are not going to stop yeah World so domination. they, <laughs> but, but like yeah. why? So like, there's there's nothing. So here they come do. marching. Yeah, yeah. They they they. I guess I, I my assumption again. We have to make assumptions because they leave these plot holes. My assumption is that this was the last programming they were given. Okay. Yeah. Maybe was that just they needed to. Yeah. Okay. I guess. My yeah. assumption is, what are you going to do tonight, Blaine? <laughs> Same thing we do every night, Pinky. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Oh, Try to take over the world. So uh, here they come, and so Van Dam, you know, in his last ditch effort, doing his, you know, customary action film uh, explosion dive. He jumps out. He, uh, he you know, the, he, yeah, he, he jumps. He out, shoots the charge that they set and sets off the chain reaction and destroys the building. And then, uh, yeah, and, and the then day is saved. The day is saved. And then, so Hillary. then he, and then he hugs up, and then he hugs Hillary and Aaron, says, "I love you." And then credits. Credits. Immediate credits. Like I was like, "What?" <laughs> Immediate was, credits. Was, was yeah, the whole movie was eighty-two minutes long. I couldn't believe it. I was There's, watching. It, I was like, eighty-two minutes. Yeah, zero cool down for any of this. Yeah. It's just, just, it's just huge explosion, <laughs> quick hug. <laughs> Cut to black <laughs> credits. I was like, "What is this?" Oh, that was crazy. I was like, "Wait a minute, is this really it? The movie's just over?" Not like I wanted it to keep going, but I was still like, "Whoa, that was that ended in a hurry." Goodness, yeah, it was merciful. Yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. know, like in the director's yeah, cut, it was. It was merciful. In the director's cut, it's going to be Van Dam. Uh, what's her name? Hillary Aaron. What the hell was her name? Which one? Aaron Porter. Aaron. Yeah. The daughter was Hillary. Oh, it's going to be. Van Dam, Aaron, and the stripper. They're going to be together. And that was the director's cut ending. Yeah. <laughs> Van Dam just like, hey, ladies, let's go. Yeah, I'm surprised there wasn't like a rando sex scene between Aaron and uh, and Van Dam. It seems like that would be the direction this movie oh, would go in. No yeah, time. I mean, they did, they no did, time. they did share their, they did share their, my daughter isn't in mortal danger very passionate kiss before oh, Van yeah. Dam went into the went back into the building. Yeah, very forced. She, she gave she she gave him this big kiss and then he like grabbed her up and gave her the kiss back. And it's like you just said how you have to get in there and save your daughter. Yeah, get the fuck out of but here. There's like, there's still time to kiss this random woman that I met six hours ago. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He gives this epic kiss like oh, I love you, babe. Like there wasn't, the wasn't you? enough money in the budget for Van Dam to grab a grab a boob in this movie. Yeah. Van Dam only shows his buns for like a set dollar amount, yeah. and they didn't have it in the budget. That's true. This is like the first Van Dam movie ever. Yeah, that's Van that's Damme buns. No buns. No. no that's split. time cop. That's time split. cop money that you need. He didn't do a split either. I don't think so. All right. No, I don't think he did. Yeah, no splits, no buns. This is not. I, I don't even know if you guys can classify this as a JCVD yeah. movie. He didn't even take a shirt off. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah. It'll be the yeah, only one I ever watch. This is the yeah. weirdest Van Damme movie ever. <laughs> this is really, Dave, this is really the only Van Damme movie you've ever well, seen. You made me watch the shittiest Van Damme movie there is, and I don't even like Van Damme. Oh, my God. Well, there's that one with Dennis Rodman, and that one's pretty bad, too. Oh, boy. It, dude, Van it already Van sounds bad. Dude, du this. dude, double, awesome. dude, double Impact was awesome. Shut up. <laughs> At least I thought it was when I was a kid, and I was a little JCVD fan. You thought this you movie watched was awesome. Lionheart. You want to watch? Lionheart's I hated movie. this movie. I <laughs> thought this movie was awful. I said that when I first brought it up. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, Lionheart was good. Obviously, Bloodsport and Kickboxer. Obviously, like the original the Universal Soldier. 
universe, the well, I'm not sure. Movie. I'm not sure if the original Universal Soldier holds up or if it's like, it doesn't. you know, or if it's like Highlander. <laughs> Armin, I, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. JCBD has got some good films, um, but there's uh, you got to go into it with the right mindset. This I, this was garbage. Yeah. This was really bad. This movie, yeah, uh, this, this movie was terrible. Yeah. Um, so it got, and it was it was really my, bad. One of my favorite Agreed. episodes of uh, How Did This Get Made was the the quest with. <laughs> oh yeah, I idea. loved the quest. I I, I, I the doubt quest the quest. Too. The quest probably doesn't hold up either. No, no, it doesn't at all. Watching it like as a, an adult, you're like, wow, none of this makes sense at all. <laughs> you're like, was this a video game that didn't get made? Yeah. Oh god, this is just blood sport, right? But like. <laughs> set you know set in, in the set in old timey 1930s <laughs> right oh god um but uh you know hey man you f- if i find myself on a, on a on a lonely sunday afternoon and there's a jcvd movie on i'm probably gonna watch it you know um, yeah totally yeah well my mom uh, loves it. your mom loves them well i JCV i originally oh, she loves them both i originally suggested the movie because you got you would yeah you, you guys were talking about your your you know your uh Thunder in Paradise and Boone the Bounty Hunter and the first movie that came to mind for me was Santa's Sleigh. Oh with Goldberg also, yeah, yeah, yeah. With Goldberg. And then I was oh, like, Well that wouldn't work. Like, but what Santa? Yeah. Yeah. And it was like awesome. I it I friggin' loved it. But like, that's that's that that's movie? for I That's yes, funny. I loved Santa Slay. We'll save that for the holidays. <laughs> it was it was it was awful. It was awful, but in a good way. Yeah, I, I felt like that that entire you know, movie was done, like the whole thing. Like they had to like redo yeah. the entire. How how did you guys? I'll ask but, each of you guys individually. Let's start with uh with Dave. How do you think Goldberg did in his debut on the on the uh, on the film screen here? On the direct uh, I, on on the directed DVD. No, I'm just kidding. It, it went to theaters because Flash went and saw it. But um, how did you? How do you think he did in his debut? I mean, he did well for uh, as much as you could expect out of out of a wrestler who's never acted before. Um, right. He he did okay for his one liners. Um, I don't know. I I probably would have rather have seen Steve Austin in this role. Which Ooh. I guess this role was originally supposed to go to Steve Austin. Okay, that's the first I've ever heard of that. Well, it's, Dave said his he agent did a lot never of his agent never notified Steve Austin about this role. Uh, they were gonna pay him fifty five thousand dollars to star in the film, and it never got to Steve Austin. So they went around and they offered it to Goldberg for like two hundred and fifty thousand. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Like How, Jesus. <laughs> wow, you really did your homework, bro. A little bit. I love it. I took notes. Yeah. That's awesome. Good. Good. Yeah. And then Austin was pissed at McMahon for not letting him know about the movie offer. Oh, wow. Freaking so Who knows? I could see Austin being a little bit more badass than Goldberg in this. Probably yeah. just, I don't know. Probably I could see him fun, nailing fun. one liners a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, a little, little bit better character work from Steve Austin. I could see Stone Cold like getting fed those lines and then having him say something completely different. Like, I could, you know what I mean? Like him be like, "Oh yeah, these are shitty lines, man." Right. I'm not saying this. It would be way more, it. way more head shaking. You know? right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, uh, Flash, what what did you think of Goldie's first appearance here? Oh, I thought I thought it was I thought it was, I thought it was awful. Mm. No, I thought it was really bad. Yeah, I, I thought that I thought that Goldberg's participation in the movie, like, brought. And I don't, I don't want to speak poorly of Goldberg because I, I'm, I, I am, I am a. He will find. But like, <laughs> but like, no, this, this just, I, I feel like Goldberg wasn't ready for this movie. He wasn't. Well, he wasn't ready for any movie. No. Um, and then, uh, and it just, I, yeah, it, it wasn't good. Yeah. You know. Huh. But like I but but I, I love I love what Goldberg did in Santa Slay, which I think we should totally do. I want to come back on the podcast and have us do it again when holidays come around. Holiday and we'll time. do Santa Slay. Right. We'll book it. Santa Slay. <laughs> Harmon, what did you think of Goldberg in this film? I think 
he did great, especially if you think of the other wrestlers that they may have used in this role. Like, could you imagine trying to see, I don't know, Bret Hart play that? No. Yeah, yeah. see? You think about Bret Hart playing this role and you think, Jesus Goldberg's fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I prefer Goldberg in the 2005 movie, The Longest Yard. Uh, I think that is the pinnacle of the Goldberg. Uh, much better. Yeah. The pinnacle. Of the oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Um, it was weird. I, th- I think that they, I don't know if they gave him much direction on this, but clearly he shouldn't have had so much like personality as because it was kind of like a, a character flub, like in this movie, like you're kind of like this, you're supposed to just be like this droned out kind of like robot looking, you know, personality wise guy, but he kind yeah. of added in like all these things. And I don't know if he was supposed to, or if anybody, maybe he wasn't. And somebody said, Hey, you know, you're Goldberg, you know, you got to add a little bit more charisma in there, but it was just, it seemed to me to, to be like a huge, um, yeah, it seemed more like instead of being killed in battle and brought back as a Universal Soldier, like he he like opted into the program. He's like, no, yeah, it just seemed like it. he was a dickhead, you know. It was like yeah. it was like these guys aren't You're gonna be like tougher. That. Fucking right, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, as far as like just kind of being there and being his first film, I thought he did okay. I just think it was just poorly written. Like some of those lines were just terrible and that's not his fault. Like, what are you going to do as a first time actor? Like, you're not going to say shit. You're getting paid. What was it? 250,000. You said, Dave, I mean, yeah, that's not the kind of movie really. That's you're, you you don't go into that movie for the plot. Right. Exactly. You don't go into it. How long for the explosions, the, the fight scenes and you know, 99, you going in there for the boobies. (laughs) And did, <laughs> that's, that's what you expect out of that film when you go in, uh, and see it. I don't know why Flash would take his yeah. poor mother and sister. <laughs> that's that's just fucked up to me. I don't know. How I didn't. That... Okay, there was there was no there was nothing in the first movie to insinuate that any of that was going to happen. No. Well, uh, yeah. See, I don't know. I, I haven't seen, like I said, any other. Uh, the only thing I remember. Is... The only thing I remember from the first movie is Dolph, uh, like making necklaces out of human ears. Ears. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only thing I remember from the first movie. But, uh, but I remember like walking away from it, like uh, thinking it was a good movie when I was a child. Going like, yeah, that's I can get behind that. It's a good action movie. That's, yeah. Uh, uh, do any of you guys remember? Like, did they uh, like promote this movie like on Nitro and WCW programming, or was this like a big? Yeah, thing? like I said, Goldberg Goldberg used. Goldberg used that Megadeth song "Crush" that plays during the credits of this yes. movie as entrance music. That's right. Huh. For like for like a period of time. Weird. That is right. And they came out. Didn't they come out live with him? Like they performed the song live with uh, at I don't know some WCW event. Huh. I don't, I don't remember, remember that specifically, that. but it could have happened. Huh. I don't know. Anyway. Well, that was I it. Just remember, I just remember the clip where he falls and goes, "Shit." <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Yeah. So this movie got a 4.1 on IMDb. Um, Way too high. Out of 10. 4.1 out of 10. Uh, <laughs> out of 100, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll go around the horn here before we wrap up. Uh, out of 10, what would you guys think? Harmon, why don't you go first? What do you think? Uh, that's a little high for me. I'm going to go uh, 3.5. Wow. 3.5. All right. Uh, Flash, what you got for us? I'm. I'm gonna. I honestly was thinking exactly the same thing that Harmon just said. I was thinking a good three and a half. Three and a half. It's, it's a little bit better than a three because there are some enjoyable moments, but it's 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 not good enough to be a four. Okay, Dave. I'll go two. Whoa! That was that was really bad. Yeah. Really, really bad. <laughs> two for the number of times Dave watched this. <laughs> for anybody uh, listening at home, I watched this movie. Fucking twice oh. for these guys because I love them. Nobody <laughs> told you to do that. Yeah. Well, we appreciate it. And we appreciate the research too. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, I'm kind of right in that same ballpark with you guys. I'm going to say eh, just because I'm a, I'm a JCVD fan, I'll, I'll give it a four. I don't know really why, but I'll, I'll go a little high on this just because. I mean, it got an extra half star because of boobs. I mean, boobs. So. Boobs. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. But uh, that's why it's got two. <laughs> yeah. Yep, dude. Awesome. <laughs> so that was it. Uh, Come in pairs, and so do my star ratings. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, where can 
our listeners find you fine gentlemen on the social media? Flash, where are you at? Where can people get a hold of you? I'm I'm on I'm on I'm on Facebook as Flash Nick McKenna. Flash That's Nick it. McKenna. You're not on the Twitter sphere? You're not on Twitter? No, I did I did I, I, I started to open up a Twitter account just so I could follow at Johnny Fashion. Unbelievable. Uh, Good reason. But I I I gave up on it because I I, I couldn't even figure out how to make it work. Wow! It just happened that day. I was having trouble with the uh, with the that's app. That's how I so feel I about like, Google Hangouts. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Dave, so do we, Dave. So do we. Yeah. I almost didn't join you guys. I almost you, said, you know what? Fuck computers and everything about them. Yeah, that's all right. That's a pretty common thing. Uh, Dave, I learned today that you don't have a cell phone. I don't have a cell phone. I don't have Facebook. Um, you could send me smoke signals. Yeah. Um, you can get to my snail mail. There you go. Uh, or uh, I'm on Twitter at Davy underscore Adams. There we go. Beautiful. Harmon, what about yourself? Is that Davy, D A V Y? You got it, buddy. Okay. I just want to make sure. No, no, I'm sorry. I, just... I don't even know how to spell anymore either. It's uh, D A V E Y. E Y. There you go. Davy. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know if it was D A V E Y, D A V Y, or if it was D A V, you know, space E. Flash, I'll find like your you. middle name is E. Yeah, Flash is really concerned about where he can find you. On I Twitter. will find you. For really that. confusing the listeners. Well, right you know, because did, did you know? I was I was telling Johnny how I told I told your beautiful wife Molly my new my new little pet name for you is my Daverit. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> oh, I don't know what that means. Yeah, I like it though. <laughs> uh, boy, Harmon, where can people find your sweet ass on social media? Uh, avoiding Flash on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and uh, at Harmon three sixteen. At Harmon three sixteen. Beautiful. Ooh, Flash! I just became your sixth follower on Twitter. I like your Easter egg what? picture. Yeah, dude, you got six. It exists. What? Yeah, I have six followers on Twitter. Yeah, yeah you joined in September, apparently. That's easily tw- three times as many as I thought I would. Yeah. Wow. Just, just me and Johnny follow you. I don't know who else. <laughs> Well, are the rest a bunch of Easter eggs or some, strippers some or bots? <laughs> yeah, some porn accounts. Yeah, one of them. One of them is JCBD. Yeah, yeah. He's looking for Universal Six soldiers. No. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Johnny Fashion. You guys can find the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Main Event Pod. We're on Podbean, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn Radio. Uh, we got the hotline again. Feel free to drop that promo. Harmon's going to give you two tickets to Limitless Wrestling and uh, an X Pac autograph. So feel free to do that. And uh, I got to give a big shout out to Follow the Fox. Uh, they're the band that does our intro and outro. Um, they're killing it out in Colorado. They're doing all kinds of gigs, doing side projects, all kinds of fun stuff. But uh, Dylan and Sarah. They're out there in Denver, Colorado. Uh, give them a follow on Facebook and Instagram. They're at Follow the Fox Band, and uh, they have a website, and it's followthefoxband.com. So check them out. Tell them we sent you. And um, that's about it. Guys, thank you, guys. This was really fun. Thanks, for everybody, for joining me. That was Yeah, really thanks great. for having me, boys. This was, this was so much fun. I, I'm happy to be on whenever you'll have me. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Right. Thank you guys so much. Thank Listen you, guys. To- Listeners at home. Oh, thank you. Thank you guys for listening. Catch you later. Oi. We're gonna talk about wrestling from today in the past.